Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. It's 8 a.m. This is a special meeting of the Darien Policy Committee. Uh, on today's agenda, we have three different policies up, 4400, social media, 6210, program of instruction, curriculum, textbooks, and other instructional materials, and a new proposed policy, 6220, challenges to instructional material. Um, I was going to start with a comment, but first I'll turn it over to Marge if you would like to talk about these policies for a moment. Do you want to talk about all of them? or I would just talk generally where they, you know, these are new, these are revisions, just that. Okay, so social media, um, the proposed updates from Shipman and Goodwin are just technical in nature, legal references. Uh, we did clarify that linking includes tagging. Um, since that was an issue that came up and we give employees fair notice of what is allowable under a policy for due process reasons. So 6210 is a policy that um, Shipman has vetted for another district about program of instruction, textbooks, and other instructional materials. If we did adopt some version of 6210, um, current policy 6210 and 6610 would be subsumed. So we would need to repeal them. That would be curriculum and, and instructional materials. And finally, um, 6220 challenge to instructional materials. Again, Shipman and Goodwin doesn't have a model policy, but they did vet this for another district. So um, again, if we make changes to any of these, we can go back to Shipman for their legal advice. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate the background. Um, so then the comment that I wanted to start with. So we are looking at three policies we received from Shipman and Goodman, who are outside counsel, uh, sometimes the board, sometimes the superintendent. We were not involved in the drafting of these policies. These came as model policies. We've been using Shipman and Goodman for a long time as a number of years to draft policy. We spent the past two years going through a policy audit, looking at all the various policies we have in the board, making various cleanup edits and changes. Also, We've had efforts being done on behalf of this policy subcommittee to look at the entire raft of policies and to make recommendations to a number of different ones. That work was done and turned over to the administration back in May, about the 22nd. That information, to the best of my knowledge, has not made it to Shipman and Goodwin as yet. Additionally, one of the policies we're looking at right now, 4400 social media, was we received a proposed from Shipman and Goodwin on May the 31st. A counter proposal was sent over Shipman and Goodwin for review. It's my understanding that nothing has happened on that policy. It's been numerous discussions with the vice chair of this board, the entire board of education, about how the policy should work and how we should work as a policy committee. There's also been a conversation at the last policy meeting discussing how we should do this, that it would make sense to have edits, have a review be done by outside counsel to save council time and resources, and then be able to move forward for the entire board to look, preserving the board time and preserving and maintaining a good workflow. That has not happened. After the last policy meeting, the superintendent asked me to come and have a meeting with him, mentioning that nothing had happened on any of the new policies yet. We had that conversation on Friday. At that time, allusions were made to a non-existent policy about how work can be ordered by the policy committee and basically portending that the superintendent himself acts as a gateway for this policy board to be in touch with its council. So before we can review these policies here, I don't think it's possible to do that unless we first talk about how we got these policies, the fact that there's no real choice here for us to evaluate, how this policy committee should work and properly do its work and have access to council, whether we should have our own council or have to use the superintendent as a gatekeeper. Clearly, that can't be the intention because the idea of having one of our staff, our administrators, be the gateway to our council just doesn't make any sense. Also, in policy 9410, it's quite clear the Board of Education policy members are able to suggest board of or changes to policy at any time for any reason. So there's nothing to preclude that this only can come from Shipman and Goodwin. Unfortunately, once again, this puts us in a situation of having no choice, similar to our recent selection for assistant superintendent, where we're given one candidate to choose from. Once again, here we're presented with one set of materials, one set of proposals, and I guess our alternative is to do a line by line and debate around the room, which discussed at the last meeting was not a very efficient way to work. So with that being said, I think before we can even discuss what's in these policies, we really need to have a conversation at the policy level, and perhaps it needs to just go right back to the board to discuss how this policy committee will work, why we're being blocked from having access to doing our work, which are a contrast from the 
copious amount of material we received from our curricular chairs uh, recently from the curriculum committee. There was no blockage there. So I, you know, you can draw your own inference as to why perhaps a number of these policies are being blocked, um, but it certainly doesn't make for good practice or good order. And I think we can't really move forward on any of these today until we address these issues. Dave, just a point of order. You haven't warned any sort of general discussion. I'm sorry you're struggling. Well, we're discussing these them. items here. We can't get to them until we discuss the process of how these were gotten to. What you've warned is discussing the three policies. It's a special board of education meeting. We can't change the agenda to have this discussion. I think this is completely germane and within the scope of discussing these policies is how these came to be before us. Okay, so then what we have on the table is basically whether we bring these to the full board or we go back. Um, isn't that basically what we're here to do? You, you, have, uh, you have a version of, of these and um, you can do anything from revising to, to not accept them at all to, to bring in another one. So it, 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 it's, you okay. have an opportunity to revise these, yes. Okay, so um, I want to ask a question, which doesn't necessarily have to do with these policies, but <clears throat> have to do with, um, does, does Shipman and Goodwin also do CABE's guidelines? Because I know Shipman and Goodwin represents like every board of education, every, you know, do they also do CABE's guidelines? They, they Somebody said that to me, so I don't they, know. They, to my knowledge, uh, Tara, to my knowledge, they, they don't, they don't service them directly, but, <clears throat> but I would never say that they, they have their own policy review position actually there. Um, and uh, legal counsel actually is, uh, they have their own legal counsel, uh, but I don't think it's a chip and a given, but, I, but they have worked with them in the past too. So, so I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't say that, but I don't believe that they are, that they, don't, that they deliver policies to them for, for school districts. And so that's also my understanding that ship, ship, shipment is not Every not 169 school districts, is that correct? Maybe not 169, no. but they have kind of a lock on Fairfield County. Um, and I'm not sure who else. I'm just, it, it's just, I'm just kind of curious yeah. about. I'll also tell you why, why uh, independently we use them, but why some people use why I've used them in the past too, is that um, half the time when you go to CAVE and you get uh, a policy and it comes back to us, uh, it needs to go to legal counsel for proof, and first of all. Um, for, for technical reasons and so on. So uh, that's one of the reasons that I think a lot of districts use uh, Shepman Goodwin. But, but anyway, that's the that's response. So are we reviewing these policies? What are we? Sure. I mean, the board has asked us to look at the curriculum challenge policy. That also comes with 6210. So that work has been directed from the entire Board of Education. The social media policy we talked about last time. I don't remember where, and this somebody helped me refresh my memory. Where did that come from? Why are we looking at that? I believe it had to do with um, a couple different instances. One, there was a, a young boy that it seemed like it was a complete accident that looked like you right. Know, no, I understand. I understand right. the the. But like, did the board ask us to? Look I don't at really that? remember truthfully. I don't mind. So that was just in the normal course of the policy audit. We had moved to personnel, the 4,000. Great. So that, but we didn't, there are a handful of other 4,000s that aren't on this list. We're still, no, we're still going, but I thought this meeting we had requested these. I, I missed the last meeting because I screwed up my calendar. So, um, but yes. Okay. So I didn't understand why we cherry picked this one because I don't think we take our work from our inbox necessarily. Um, Okay, so again, our agenda is to review these policies. Is that what we're doing or are we not? That's what I'm prepared to do. Me too. If the chair of the committee would like to have a different discussion at another time, then perhaps that's something that could be arranged for another time. But I don't believe that is on the agenda or appropriate for this morning. So the question would be, how do you want to work? We're just going to take what's given or would you like to go line yeah. by line? Or how would you like to, do you think we, that work should happen, Julie? I have questions. I have comments. I'm prepared to go through these policies as drafted. Great. And this is what we've done in the past. This is what has been done for, this is the, the way that these subcommittees work. There was a lot of reference just made to things that didn't happen, were never seen, weren't shared. I don't know what any of that is about. So I'm not prepared to have a conversation about that anyway. Um, so I am prepared to respond to what has been put in front of us. So is there a sense of the policy subcommittee as to how we'd like to proceed? 
So I guess we'll look at it. I mean, my on 6210 first, I mean, one of my first things I noticed is there is zero board supervision. I mean, I don't remember which policy it is that we hand over our supervision to administration. Um, but I think part of the issue is that, that we have handed over complete supervision and there is no supervision that comes from the board in this. Um, it also seems a little vague and I think it doesn't really move us in the direction where we've solved a problem. I feel like this just is a lot of- What yeah. problem do we need to solve? Can I when just, can, can I just, are we starting at 6210 or what are, what are we actually- I don't know why. What's we that start way? with 6210 oh, okay. and we start at 4400 first on the agenda. Okay, 4400? Okay. okay, so it's on the floor. We can start with 6210. I think you need to follow the agenda. Yeah. Yes, agenda is 4400. So the social media policy, I have a bunch of questions about. Um, this policy is existing in our um, policies now, last adopted in 2016. I would argue that the social media landscape has changed since 2016. Um, I you know, have a couple specific questions, but I think there's a couple of things in here that may not make sense any longer and we might need to adjust a little bit. Um, the first overarching question, I guess, is do Board of Ed members fall into Board of Education? Um, and to look exclusively at the top of, uh, it says page four. Um, it includes all names, logos, buildings, images, and entities under the authority of the Board of Ed. Does that include, are the nine of us included in this policy? And I know we don't have specific DPS accounts, but I'm curious. Um, I would say we'd probably have to look at the bylaws and see which of the, which, what it says about that. Yeah. Um, if, if you wanted to put, Generally speaking, it doesn't, but it, um, if you want to address that, you could address that, but that would probably, win. I think that that would win the, the, the Board of Education by law. Sure. I, I do think of it, but I say that these, these aren't going, I don't, I don't anticipate these being quick. They're not presented to be quick right. um, or just to be indoors. I think it's going to take a lot of questions back and forward. Even probably, this is just my opinion, even before it goes to the board uh, until the committee sort of back and say some things. Um. I can keep going with my list of questions, but I can throw one in. Go ahead. Um, I'm curious how we enforce this or oversee this policy. There's a lot um, of terrain out there, and it's very challenging to keep tabs on everything that's going on. So I know we don't like to create policy that we can't keep an eye on. So I don't, I don't know how we do that. I don't believe we're set up for that. Um, further, there's mention of district issued accounts. Is the district actually going to issue social media accounts or what does that language mean? And to the point about linking, um, that, that has already been in here, number eight, but I think it's, it's something that's not being followed by many different <clears throat> groups. I mean, I think if you, if you look at the athletic team pages, they're, they're constantly linking to look at this, what this alums doing in college and I, I think it's, it's very very hard to enforce so I think we have to think about to Julie's point who is enforcing this what is happening um, and you know there's, there's a lot of different um, definitions in here um, looking specifically at number four you know harassing defamatory obscene abusive etc I don't know what that means and if there's a specific definition of where's the line for the different people. I think different people have different opinions on that. So um, those are my, my points. So I looked at this when I received it previously and had a number of comments provided in a red line, which is not made it to anyone apparently. But a number of things were the lack of scoping. I think there were different various social media types of connections that were not included in this list that perhaps needed to be. And I think that it was a little deficient there. So I think they had a few, I think I had about a dozen or a few more than that. I had references to personally identifiable information. I didn't see that in here. Uh, also in terms of personal identification uh, and personal family information and making sure that that's not disclosed in any way, shape or form in any social media needs to also be covered as well as any sort of survey material that may take place online, whether that be a Google form or other things uh, that can happen with polling. Hang 
Uh, employee on counts. Yeah, so I think there were a number of different changes, which would be happy to circulate to the board if that's the way we'd like to work, or do we want to sit and go through each? Well, I think that's what we do, right? We do the work here at the table so that the public is involved in the discussion and hears the comments and questions. Sometimes it gets a little tedious, understandably, but I think that's the goal. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to make a comment on enforcement, just because, I mean, yes, difficult to enforce, but that's not, I feel like in our world, there's a lot of things that are difficult to enforce. That doesn't yeah. mean I'm you not, don't have like, Standards. I'm not saying we don't have a policy because yeah. we can't, of course. I'm just saying we need to think about how prescriptive we are so that I think there just needs to be probably for, you know, like you said, there's like, you know, people already linking. Maybe they need reminders, right? Like maybe there's a, mm -hmm. we have the kids come in in the beginning of every high school year and remind them that they can't do this, they can't do that in order to be part of the clubs. They need, to, maybe we need reminders for teachers and, mm -hmm. and everyone that, yeah. hey, Stop posting photos of young children on your personal accounts. Yeah. This isn't allowed. No, I've heard that complaint year after year. You know, especially at the opening of school. Uh, if you want to go line by line, let's do it. So, in the first sentence, policy 4400 social media, strike social media, insert the word social media and online communication. Second sentence, insert yeah, the word that, Darian, the Board right. of this Education. Is not productive. Thank you, Julie. That's what I've been trying to avoid. Obviously, predictable result of what was going to happen with this process. It's okay to have questions about things presented in this. No, I was just told we're going to do the work at the table, so everyone can hear the yeah. discussion. I think we're reasonable adults. I think we can understand how to work cooperatively and in a productive manner. I'm not go sure through about the that. information in a detailed way, but without being intentionally disruptive or I don't know what another word would be. Uh, you asked to do the work here at the table. I'm I happy did. to read in the changes if you'd like it done. Otherwise, I'm happy to circulate a red line and people can look in that and mark up comments so and we can we circulate have, it that way. We have a red line. Maybe it's not your red line. I, but if there are issues that you have, let's, let's go through and ask questions like Julie and Tara and I have been doing. So, for example, I have a question about number three, the bottom of page four. It says the employee must set up a club to a group list which will be closed. That's not how the things are existing now. And I'm questioning if that's appropriate to have it closed or should these be public accounts or some of them be public accounts so that, you know, the family moving into Darien wants to find out what's happening at homes mm -hmm. or in the, the DHS, I don't know, robotics club or whatever. I don't believe that these should be closed. Some of these should not be social closed social media accounts. I'm curious other people's point of view on that. <clears throat> I understand where you're coming. I, I, I see both sides of it, right? I, I understand the point of keeping a closed group, right? You know, I, I don't let my child have an open Instagram account, right? But I also understand your point of somebody moving yeah. to town. And I think it, there could be both, right? I think there could be- I know. guess those people moving to town can ask for permission, right? You know, maybe a few days to- and I think if you, in my view, I, I see, you know, Jerry and Ice Cole could have an Instagram account. Jerry and, you know, the 300 English club class is not going to have an open account. Like they want to have something that should be closed. But I think there, there are variations on a theme of some should be not closed and some should be, you know, a closed group. But I think just this language in here seems a little bit over, overly prescriptive for that purpose. Um, my thought on that was it talks about in point number one and the rules concerning district sponsored social media activity. It talks about social media sites as an educational tool or in relation to extracurricular activities. I think there's a difference between an educational tool or an informational tool, like yeah, that's something good. that's promoting, there's a game today at four against Staples or the so-and-so club is meeting tomorrow morning at eight as information rather than education, which I believe is deeper and perhaps gets into curriculum or gets into the substance of that meeting or a club. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know if the attorneys would agree or if there's a way to parse that out um, related to closed or not closed. So I think my question, if I'm going back to the attorneys is what you're looking for. Do you want the informational to be open? In my mind, that makes sense. Okay. I do. I mean, I, th I think there's a piece of social media that is designed to be open and public facing. And I understand needing to put guardrails on that for, for the school district, but I, I, I think that there are 
times and places where that is the appropriate way to go. Personally, I'm open to discussion. Um, I'll, I'll throw in another question. <coughs> I don't know if there is or should be a way to determine which is a board issued or DPS sanctioned or whatever the right language is account. Like should, should staff be told they can't use DPS in their, their account name unless this is their official, you know, in a personal account, you can't use DPS or whatever the right decision would be. But is there a clean way to make that a simple, hard and fast rule? I think that makes sense to have DPS in the name of just so it's, you know, how you get the, the blue, the blue check mark on Twitter, similar thought. So I, I thought it sounded to me that the administration was going to issue those so that. That's my question. I don't yeah. know. Okay. okay. I don't, that's how, that's it how said something about issued here. I don't believe that that's what happens right now. No, I don't long, believe that is what happens right now at all. So that's point yes, you're correct, Ms. Yeah. Okay. And the, right. the oversight of it uh, uh, varies in terms of permission from administration or otherwise. So I do think if there's if, if there's uh, thought that uh, some sort of descriptor would be helpful in, in some I don't know this I don't know what's out there, what's what's being taken, what's not being taken, what's um, but if there's some sort of uh, tagline or otherwise that. Um, people feel would be helpful uh, for, for continuity and recognition uh, as, a, as, a, as a step in helping that. I'm sure we can consider that. Look at that. So for instance, you kind of look at the district and kind of see what we have going on now. And I don't know how many art, I just know that yeah, there's yeah, an art yeah. button, right? Do we then look at that and say, okay, we are going to have a district art. This person is in control this one is no longer sanctioned or as a teacher, you need to take the DPS off that. Like how, you know what I mean? How are we going to go about looking at what's out there and reining in what's going on currently? Cause it, I feel, it feels like it might be like a little bit hurting cats, right? Like, so, so do you do that, that we have to go and be the cop or do you do that? that they get in trouble if they violate the policy. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Do we look and see, or do we just put it out there and say, if you have this account, right? It's, yeah. There's I mean, a I lot think, of questions about how I this think we, we have to finalize the policy. Once the policy yes. is voted right. upon, then it's the job of the administration was, to go back to the faculty and staff and say, here's the new board policy. You need to make sure that your, your accounts are in, in compliance. Okay. So and the consequences it, are in the draft yeah. policy. So does our policy have to contemplate that or we'll just be at the high level what we're looking for and there is there i mean the disciplinary consequences are in here right right i was just i was just pulling up like just because i want to say you know got mm -hmm. during public school lunch program during public school admin during high school prom um prom poll right dh right so now we've gotten in these are those are student Those accounts. Those are student accounts, teachers. right? Like, so we can't, and they're, they're truthfully perfectly fine. Um, but it, it, like, where does that come into play? So this policy only applies to employees. Okay, great. I haven't seen a model policy that applies to students. Well, I don't think we can. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. okay. So that goes back to Julie's point of, should, should we have a standardized naming of, you know, DPS, whatever? So that it's clear, right? Yes, and maybe that's a line in the policy. All accounts need to be named blank, blank, blank. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, could, Marge, could you explain the public trust doctrine? It's bottom of page six, number four, under rules concerning personal online accounts. Every, I, I'm not familiar with it, and everything I found with my deep Google search Wait, was specific to natural resources like water, air, and land. <laughs> Number four says in accordance with the public. Right. Um, or can, we can come back to it if we need to, but I right. didn't know I, that I was. mean, 
I will check with Shipman, but I think there needs to be a certain public trust in the school district as a whole. But if it's used in a context where the legal reference is incorrect, I'll certainly ask them about Thank that. You. I also had a question on number eight under that same heading of personal online accounts. It says an employee may not post official board of ed material using a personal online account without written permission of his or her supervisor. Would that pertain to public materials like a posted agenda or materials, you know, for tonight's meeting, so to speak? And I, I asked that thinking really of when the pandemic started and people were just trying to make sure that people had the information they needed to stay up to speed. There was a lot of sharing that went on. And I think it was helpful at that time to make sure that people could get the info they needed. So um, that seemed very um, specific, limiting. Technically, technically it would. Um... But if someone's going to post something that we think was helpful, I'm assuming that there would be some exceptions and understanding about that. But, um, but, but technically, you're right. It would include that. It would include that. Okay. Oh, and I had one more thought. I'm sorry. On the tagging piece, mm -hmm. in addition to alums, um, a visiting author or a speaker that's coming is that it's it, it would it, that never be appropriate to tag such individuals. Are you, are you under number eight? Yeah. Yes, number eight back on the, I, I jumped back, I'm sorry, rules concerning district sponsored social media activity. So bottom of page five. That is what you're saying here. Right? Yeah. So yeah. whether it's that or a coach or, or a resource, yes. Which happens like all the time. Regular. Right. Mm -hmm. So that seems. Well, so we, again, I'm asking, do we want them to be able to tag certain non-district sponsored accounts because I don't. So I think that puts us in the muddy water that we were in. So right. unfortunately, because yeah. of what is out there and the access, we do need to be a little prescriptive in this situation. Otherwise it's kind of a free for all. So if I would think that if then a person wants to look up that author, they can Google it, right? It'll take them three seconds. Um, Yes, it would be easier to just click the link, but that's what, you know, I think gets us in a little bit of trouble. So you're suggesting you could name them, but not tag them, like not have it be live? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just think that's something. Well, we if you're talk having about. a visiting author, I mean, it's not the surprise author, right? I mean, <laughs> right. Not right. Name them. I think to the point of, you know, the college athletes too, you could just say, you know, look at John Smith. He's doing the great. You don't have to tag John Smith, but right. you could say, okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I think, I think it's a conversation to be had. Again, the purpose of social media is to make those things work. So if we don't want that, let's just have that as, an, as a clear discussion point. Well, there are you know, college visits and all of those things that right, people will be linked to or tagged to. Uh, it is complex because you, you, you want to embrace the technology as a learning tool and an informational tool, but that comes with all of this, these types of discussions. I think then we, I think in the past we have been working under the thought that people will make, yes. you know, appropriate decisions. And I think sometimes appropriate decisions aren't made and then we're surprised and slapped in the face. So it's like how much, you know, you, you want to give leeway, but when you then have things that happen that you're like, well, oh, gee, how, how, why would you do that? And that's how we end up here. And I think the linking question really needs, is kind of what spurred this on to some degree recently. So I think we'd have to get our arms around this from a policy perspective as to how we would like to see that work. Um, whether we think it's going to be wide open because that's the point of social media or whether we take down the links or, or how we think about and that. I think, I think there's, there's two sides of that story. I mean, I think there's, there is a small group of, parent, of, <clears throat> of community members that were the, the account that we're all talking about that were very upset with that. And there were others that said, that was art and there, you know, there's, there's a different opinion. And I think it's really hard to make, where's the, where's the line? I, and I don't know that, I don't know that we're, we want to do that. Yeah, I think that, I think the issue is in this social media world, in literature, and I'm not even gonna say literature because it's not literature, the things that we're, we were talking about. Um, I think we've gotten to a point where in other aspects of the world, 
there are age restrictions, guidelines, mm-hmm. right? You know, you have to be 21 to drink. You have to be 18 apparently to buy a lighter or cold medication. Um, can't buy like Allegra, Claritin, anything like that unless you're 18. Um, you know, movies, what have you. Yet social media is still, right? We're in a bit of a cowboy land here. So, you know, maybe we have certain, a little bit more clarification around links, right? Maybe, maybe you can link the, you know, author that's coming in, you know, but maybe you don't link things that may seem, right? Like it's maybe- It's muddy water. Yeah, it's muddy water, this is what I'm saying. It's very muddy. So when you open it up and now you have people's different opinions and what somebody's offended by, somebody else isn't offended by, um, the idea that if it's not offensive, it, you know, parents will always be offended by something in schools. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. You do have, yes, um, certain issues that if people are offended by it, right, you know, if you're talking about racism, things like that, that's something, that's a different discussion than where people see a line about, like, naked people in porn. Like, that. that's different, right? Like, again, it's oh, all I, super money. And I guess to Sarah's point a moment ago, some people saw it as controversial, some people saw it as art. But what's the educational purpose? Like, how, how do we tie this back to what we're doing here? And, and so I think not having links is an elegant solution because then it's not opinion-based, it's subjective. We're just not going to do it. Uh, but if we're going to perhaps try and have something on people's sensibilities, then uh, if there's not an education purpose, then I don't care if it's art or if it's like, why are we doing it? I would just throw out that policy is a pretty blunt tool. And I think we need to be careful to think that we can craft policy that will cover all of the nuances and intricacies that we're discussing here. Well, that would be while you write policy at the high level, then you can have administrative procedures and other mm-hmm. guidelines to actually effectuate it. I mean, right now, Shipman and Goodwin's model policy is no linking, I think, just for the reason you're talking about. I mean, I can go back with them with guidance about whether you want to split linking and not linking, but that's their guidance. Okay, thanks. I mean, you could take this from the perspective of, <clears throat> um, and sometimes policy is written in this way. Uh, it's coming up through the process and through the actual review process itself, but sometimes you do do the process because it's worth a look at retrospectfully. It's not the ideal way, um, but if it's, if it's, it's a, the committee eventually, not right now at this moment, but if, there is, if it's relatively okay with the majority of the policy and they're amending the tagging and so on to make a correction, I mean, that's one approach um, that, that could be helpful just to let's, let's amend that um, and let, let's make sure that we implement that, communicate that, uh, and honor that. And that's an approach to it. Yeah. And as a protector of our staff, I just think there needs to not be any discretion. It needs to be clear for them what's acceptable right. or not. Right. So please, yes, please. And Dave, as you just said, it's just helpful. Okay, it's very yeah. clear, right? Yeah, um, that makes sense. Whether we, whether we like it or we don't, at least it's clear. It's, it's something that we can... Okay. I'm all set with 4400. Yeah, yeah. So if you are for 4,400, can we just have a quick, just, just so that I certainly don't want to be confused leaving here uh, as to what clarifications we're looking or what, where we, we go from here with that policy. Uh, just so for the administration's point, so I can get it to you, but if, you, if you're expecting anything. I mean, I would just like clarification on the questions that we right. raised. Yeah. All right, could you just clarify what those are? I just want to make sure you're- Well, I write down everything, so- <laughs> No, not, not, not everything, but just- We're going to clarify Board of Education. Um, we're going to talk about enforcement, but I do think that many of our policies, it's the honor system, as Mr. Brown said, until you get caught not following it. So it's maybe not the best, but it is um, what it is. Um, The linking issue, the scope, I think, I I didn't catch all of your comments, but if you want to 
let the no, I mean, I, I, I'm still waiting for comments to the red line I submitted. So I'd, I'd like to hear that. And that list is in there. So you can have that to work yes. off of. So I haven't seen whatever red line you've submitted. So I don't know how what how the committee acts on that. Well, I, you know, that's a great question. I think I opened a meeting with that. I'm still not sure how to resolve but, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we take our red lines from the attorneys that we've hired to okay. do the work for us. Mr. Brown is not the attorney for the board, so I don't understand the redlining approach. I'm sorry, okay. you lost me there? You're not our attorney. You have not been hired to be the attorney to review our policies for us. So, so I suggested the reading in the proposed the language and you didn't like that approach. So instead of me writing it down and sharing that, how would you like me to communicate that otherwise? Have a conversation about the questions and issues that you have with the work that's been put I in I started front of to us. do that. You didn't like that approach, Julie. No, so I, I think there, the impact is not with me. I don't need you to change Board of Ed to BOE or whatever other little tiny nitpicky word things concepts and discussion around issues and questions. That's what we're here to do. I don't agree. Well, then we'll have to agree to disagree. I think it's okay if I may say, I think it's okay for, for anybody, any uh, member of the committee here to come and present. This is, I, I guess so many of these that here's, here's a, I had to, I had to make revisions to it and here's the revisions and enter for the record as to his or her opinion on that, that that's fine and then it'll take no and that's what's been done numerous times over the years with different policy chairs that's always what's happened usually we find a few typos from Shipman and goodman that's exciting so i mean people have done that over the years that that's not an unusual process uh, i don't think you need to be an attorney to do run a red line i uh, never heard that rule or constraint before also um it would be a fairly easy and elegant way to share this information around between different board members and people can make comments and then we can have a discussion in public. Um, that's the way we've handled numerous things in the past. So I don't understand why we would have to change it, have a change in process at this time. And I mean, you know, it may not be your are there, Normal are there concepts in this policy that you would like to change? Yeah, I don't think it's broad enough in terms of the scoping of different social media types. I think it also is not broad enough in the scope of personal information and other identifiable information that can be shared, whether that be family situations, personal information that doesn't belong to be shared in a school setting based on outside activities, which may be known in the school, but certainly shouldn't be broadcast in social media. So those are all questions that we could ask our, our hired attorneys and how they think that should be addressed. If there's consensus in doing that, um, generally the way it would look if, if a member of the committee presented uh, a number of changes or extensive changes or limited changes, this committee would say to us, okay, could you go, go back? We, we want to move that forward and get a, an opinion on those. That's what the committee would like to do. That's what we would do. And in 9430, it explicitly, explicitly enumerates that Board of Ed members are able to propose changes. Presumably yes. that would be in writing. Uh, maybe it's a red line, maybe it's not, but we're trying to save some time there. Happy to just do it clean, not a problem. And then I'm happy to submit that and get some feedback. That'd be great. Been looking for that for a while now. Can you say that again? I didn't follow that. I would be happy to provide either clean or in red line the proposed changes I had. The red line was done to save time for the attorneys because we're trying to be conscious, conscious of the cost for the subject matter experts here and try and see whether they think that's too broad or not too broad. The process was really discussed a couple of meetings ago by this policy committee without objection. I think that's fine. I mean, I, if you have questions about what's in here and you have suggestions, that's that's great. I would love to, to see your suggestions in writing so that we could talk about it together as a subcommittee and then make recommendations. I don't understand. So now we're going to ask Shipman and Goodwin to review Mr. No, Brown's we're look at draft. Mr. Brown, we're going to look at Mr. Brown's red lines and ask and amongst ourselves decide how we what we think about that. Margie, did you finish all your questions? I, you know what? I was just going to say, I'm not really sure what should I wait on these questions for Shipman and Goodwin until we I would. Sounds like a wait. Yeah. 6210 into one. 
So, Mr. Chairman, the next step, just just to be clear, is to, is to enter into the record here. Anybody who wanted to make any changes, extensive or otherwise, and we'll, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. I'm moving to 6210. Please. Uh, my overarching question is, I do think this is broad enough. Um, I, my, I want to understand where library materials falls, fall under this policy because this is instruction curriculum textbooks and other instructional materials, not materials that are just available. Um, are these materials that are only used in instruction, direct instruction or, you know, homework, secondary materials, whatever. Um, I do think I would like an understanding about library materials and how that fits in here. So the intent is for them to be covered, but if you think it needs to be clarified. I, that would... I do think it needs to be clarified okay. because I think there's a difference between books that are used directly in instruction versus books in the library. So the, the administrative guidelines or regulations that are attached uh, talk to the, the library books just for clarification. I'm like, like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying Tara had some questions at the beginning, but about this. Um, well, it actually has more to do with the uh, uh, challenge. challenge. So 6210, uh, over a month ago, I drafted a counterproposal 6220, which was shared with the administration. It seems we've gone nowhere. But looking at the proposed 6210 here in front of me, there's a few questions that have been raised. Uh, number one, you mentioned, Sarah, the difference about classroom material versus library material. Uh, I don't know that it discusses having anything cataloged as to what that entire scope of what we have, both in the classrooms and in all of the libraries is and how that would be addressed. Also, I didn't see anything as to what the process is of who can submit books, whether that has to be tied back to a curricular purpose or whether that does not have to be tied back to a curricular purpose. Who's going to catalog that? What is the process for submitting books for addition to either classrooms or libraries? And how are we going to look through that process? And uh, again, making sure that whatever that process is does have a coherent tie back to curricular purpose. And looking at some of the lists going on here in the review and selection materials, we have about quality, uh, readability, author and significance format. Again, overall purpose, I don't see a tie back to a curricular purpose or a specific curriculum. Further than that, I would like to see where it deals with why this book serves a greater educational purpose than other materials uh, that may belong here, that may more appropriately belong in the challenge material uh, or the challenge process and how people can ask questions about materials that we have in either the classroom or the library. Uh, I would argue that not everything in our schools is tied to curriculum. I mean, part of being a school is allowing access to other literary works, whether it's, you know, going to the library, picking up a magazine or reading, like that's not curricularly tied, but it is available for students. So I don't know that you can, that you want to tie everything that we have directly back to standard X, Y, Z. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Um, I do think there's a broader reason why we have books, media, anything. Um, it's not necessarily to be taught in a specific class. Um, so, hi. Uh, hi. Um, I would just, some of this seems a slightly too broad to me um, because, you know, when we talk about quality of the writing and production, that's pretty subjective readability, literary quality, very subjective. You know, I would say, I would argue that even on this table, we would have difference of opinions mm -hmm. in what that, what mm -hmm. that is. So unfortunately, I feel like th that needs to be clearer, you know, and maybe even, even grade wise, or at least school wise, what is considered literary quality in elementary school, versus middle school versus high school. Yeah, and I think that's why we developed the district curriculum leadership team to help with that. 
um, you know, we delegate our responsibility to them to make those decisions, say that this is appropriate quality. Right, I, I get that. Um, to me, that was is one of the overarching issues that we hand over all supervision, right? And then we get hate mail um, as if we are responsible for this. Well, we so, don't hand over all supervision. We approve the curriculum, but that we, we are required by so statute to have a curriculum right, committee. I, I understand that, but the, I, I'll go look up and see which policy it is. But there is a policy that we hand over. Yeah, you delegate. The thing. It's delegated. Yes. It's our authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we have no, we have no real recourse in any of this because of that policy. So I would like to see things clearer because we have had things, for instance, come up where then we're told, well, that's not really part of the curriculum, that's secondary instructional materials, yeah. right? So there seems to be loopholes that, right, then I'm sitting here as a member of the board trying to answer to the public saying, well, I really have no authority, recourse, supervision, say. So that's why I would like things to be clearer. Yeah, and I think we need to talk about the challenge policy as well, because I think some of these issues percolate through there. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, looking at the time, I'm going to have to um, ask for a motion to adjourn. Anyone's interested? Uh, I, yeah, this, okay. This, uh, this seems like it's going to be a two hour meeting. Well, so then my suggestion would be that we need to schedule a meeting. Yes, as soon as possible to discuss this again, because we cannot have another four month lag of discussing this. The public is, has been asking for this. Does this need to be a morning meeting or can we do an evening meeting? I think evening might make more sense for people's schedules. Right, I, I, I'm just asking because I'm right. I, I'll try and accommodate whatever the board wishes. I'm flexible. Yeah. Unless there's an interest in starting say 5 a.m. Yeah, no. And can we, I would also like to ask if we can get whatever other materials need to be reviewed, if there are other drafts or Mr. Brown has his revisions he wants us to see. That'd be great. Um, if that's going to be part of that, let's just make sure that we have that on the agenda and in the information. Perfect. So I had a motion to adjourn. I guess I'll second that. Oh, before that, do we, want to, right? do we want to come up with a date right now for a meeting or, or do you want to do that offline? Well, we need to have public comment, comment. no? Yes. Yeah. And it sounds like people are out of time. So I would say we should probably schedule it. Good morning. After. If anyone online would like to participate in public comment, please use the raised hand option. You will have up to three minutes to comment. Once recognized, please state your name and address. Krista Carnes, you are unmuted and recognized. Hi there. <clears throat> Krista Carnes, uh, 45th Avenue. Um, Sorry, hi. Um, I just want to comment about the social media uh, discussion in that I think we all have to, you have to be, able to be careful not to just be reactionary because what we know about social media today is going to change tomorrow. And you're creating this slippery soap, not only to freeze opinion and, uh, you know, exchange of conversation, but we don't know what's coming down the pike. Um, in terms of the tagging question and the linking, I think you have to consider who the audience is and who you are protecting, right? There have to be policies in place to protect our children and to protect our teachers. I don't, I would love to know what the teachers feel is the use of social media in their classroom and maybe use that as a starting point to create that policy. Um, I think um, in many instances, good social media policy includes, you know, if it's a DHS, you know, music department, uh, Instagram page, that there is a, that they're the moderator or the administrator of that club or that group is tagged in that so that if someone has a question, they know who is making the post. Um, if, chill, if the students themselves are posting, um, that's another level of consideration, but oftentimes when they make the post, they can indicate who made the post. So that's in an effort to keep more transparency in the process, which I know is something that we all um, are eager for. Um, I didn't hear any discussion about the potential for our employees to be sued um, for, for making posts and then, you know, to, uh, 
to Sarah's point about the definition of obscenity, the definition, um, you know, that seems like a very slippery slope in opening up the district to a lot of legal uh, problems and potential, you know, costs and, you know, taking away from, you know, the work of our students and our teachers. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, obviously the protections, but, I, you know, reactionary pro uh, policies only serve what happened in the past. And I, I, you know, I haven't heard any real, you guys have more information than I do, than we do, but, you know, what are the specific incidents that we are policy, we are creating this policy to protect from? And if it's really just somebody's, you know, personal opinion or, you know, somebody's moral line that gets crossed, that doesn't necessarily represent the district as a whole. Thank and you so much for your time. Them. Thanks. Any more raised hands? There are no more raised hands at this time. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?